Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I wanted to make a video for y'all going through a popular database option that I've been seeing coming up more and more uh, in my travels in the Dataverse. Um, and it is MariaDB. Um, so even though it's new to me, it's actually a pretty old uh, database. It's been around since uh, 2009, I think. And it's an open source relational database management system. So you know me, I love open source. Uh, that's actually a fork of MySQL. And so it was created by the original developers of MySQL because they were concerned about Oracle's acquisition of MySQL back in 2009. Um, so they were basically like, all right, we don't trust the big red O, which was probably warranted. And so we're gonna uh, have our own, we're gonna basically open source fork this uh, and make MariaDB for the public. And since then, MariaDB has just continued to grow in kind of a forked path from MySQL and now it's a you know, robust, reliable, and high performance database solution, which is widely used in various applications from really small scale projects to you know, larger enterprise data systems. And so today I'm going to just explain in depth, you know, hey, what is MariaDB? How does it work? What does the architecture look like? Uh, and then go into some of its pros, some of its cons, uh, how to get started using it, and then its best and worst use cases. Um, so without further ado, let's get into it. So here up on the screen, I actually have an example of the diagram, and I'll get into that in a second. But first, I just want to talk about the basics of MariaDB. Um, and so even, you know, it uses the same structure query language that pretty much every other database uses. Um, and it's also designed, surprise, surprise, to be highly compatible with MySQL and enable users to migrate from MySQL to MariaDB really seamlessly because they want to get people off the Oracle MySQL. Um, and so it also supports a wide range of storage engines. So the underlying hardware doesn't matter as much as something like MySQL potentially. It's got advanced clustering capabilities and it's also got good replication features. Uh, and it's suitable for a lot of the same use cases that MySQL would, uh, is usable for, which is a lot. Um, and so how it works under the hood and how it achieves some of these benefits um, is it follows a client server architecture. So you have a database server, which is MySQL uh, D that processes requests and then multiple clients that interact with the server. So those will be different computers, different you know, people that are performing queries on the database. And its core components include a storage engine layer. And that's the layer that's actually responsible for the physical storage of the data. Um, and so you can see there at the bottom of uh, the kind of architecture diagram I have up. Uh, and so the, again, storage engines uh, support by MariaDB include things like InnoDB, My, ISAM, ARIA, more, um, and each storage engine has its own characteristics. So you know you have some flexibility and hey, I want to optimize for things like transaction support or a certain storage format or performance optimizations and still have MariaDB as a layer that sits on top of it, um, which is pretty useful. So you have that kind of flexibility and, and plug and play different types of databases if the need arises. Then you have the query processing layer. And so this is the layer that handles SQL query processing, optimization, and then also execution. Um, and that's seen on the right of this uh, diagram. Um, and then you also have a connection handling layer. So that is kind of these user modules that are handling the connections to the actual clients. Um, and these manage the client connections, authentication, and also session management. Um, and then you could also see down here, and you can see kind of these different performance modules, which are the different databases underlying the MariaDB uh, front end. Um, and so MariaDB supports replication across many of these different databases. So if you want to have, you can kind of see this represented on the graph, but if you want to have different or uh, co multiple copies, fallbacks, um, you on different pieces of hardware, you can support all of that through one MariaDB interface. Um, and then also implement other clustering solutions like Galera cluster for high availability and scalability. So you can actually, see if you have more dynamic workflows and, or workflows in terms of how much data you need to store, you can scale the underlying uh, storage compute to match the current needs rather than having kind of a lot of different storage engines um, turned on that are actually processing data. Um, and speaking of storage engines, um, you have multiple different storage engine query, sorry, storage engine options here. Uh, you can see kind of just a super fun table of the different options. Um, just, I wanted to illustrate, you know, you have all these different things and give you a little bit of a matrix and I'll also explain. So some key storage engines include NODB, which is the default storage engine known for ACID compliance. Um, so you know, 
what do you, you want to see what a CIDIC compliance looks like, go check my video on that. Um, it's got support for foreign keys, row level locking, uh, and it's really suitable for transactional applications. Uh, then another option would be my ISAM, which is really known for simplicity, but also speed and read heavy operations. Uh, it lacks transactional support, but it's really good if you just need to query, you know, kind of more a static uh, database. And then you have ARIA, which is a more crash save alternative to my ISAM, um, which is designed for more complex queries and read intensive workloads, kind of a little bit of a best of both worlds there. Um, and then you also have Column Store, uh, which is another option that is designed for analytical workloads and provides columnar storage for faster query performance in large data sets. Um, so really just wanted to illustrate, like you have a ton of different options out there uh, in terms of what you want the actual storage engine for your MariaDB to be. Um, and so it's important to look at them and say, hey, this is what seems like it'd be best for my particular use case. And so speaking of replication and clustering and, uh, you know, just the different ways, so I mentioned a few times and, you know, the Galera cluster is scaling different, adding different database engines. You also have the option to use MariaDB's robust replication features, which allows your data to be replicated across multiple servers for both redundancy and load balancing. Um, and just showing you a quick example here where you have, you know, a core MariaDB Galera cluster that, you know, is splitting the load of the you know, actual processing data. And then you have a backup slave database that is essentially just reading uh, data from there periodically and acting as a you know, backup snapshot of the database. Um, and so you can have replication occur synchronous or asynchronous. And so an asynchronous replication, changes made on the master server are replicated to slave servers, but not in real time. And that's what I was talking about there where you have kind of like checkpoints um, or there's synchronous replication where you ensure data consistency across all nodes. And this is where you have multiple nodes actually containing the same data by applying changes simultaneously. And so that's what you're seeing in the Scalera cluster where you have a, it's a popular synchronous synchronous replication solution from MariaDB that can provide high availability and then automatic failover if any of these components within that cluster um, actually fail. Um, so I just want to illustrate that because that's you know one of kind of MariaDB's uh, key differentiators there. So now given that MariaDB is kind of a for, is, is a fork of MySQL, I wanted to talk about some of its pros and cons and I'll just kind of use MySQL as a comparison point since they are very closely related. Uh, so number one, MariaDB is open source, which means it's got a transparent community driven development for better or worse. And there's no licensing costs if you just want to spin it up and use it on your own. They do have an enterprise model or server that they offer, but you can always just download the source code and run it on your own servers. Just requires you know more expertise in actually running it. Then there's also compatibility with MySQL. So high compatibility with MySQL allows for easy migration and integration with existing MySQL applications. So it's not, you're already using a lot of MySQL, probably really easy to use MariaDB and most applications support MySQL as an integration option. Um, and then you also have some enhanced performance features over MySQL, such as the ARIA storage engine, and then also more query optimizations, um, which makes MariaDB suitable for uh, high performance applications. Fourth, scalability. Um, it's got really advanced replication and clustering solutions, which enables both horizontal scaling and also high availability. So great for you know, zero downtime applications. And then on the security front, you have regular updates and a very proactive security stance that ensures robust protection against any kind of vulnerabilities. Um, and then finally, extensibility. It's got a pluggable storage engine architecture as we went over. And so the support for multiple plugins allows you know, really deep customization on the hardware level to specific needs. However, on the con side of things, the complexity of MariaDB can be a turnoff. You know, the advanced features and customizability that you have uh, can be complex and then thus require you to have really skilled database administrators for optimal performance and maintenance. Um, and then on the documentation side of things, it's improving, but MariaDB's documentation can sometimes lag behind, you know, MySQL's counterpart, um, which can lead to difficulties and troubleshooting. You know, that's sometimes the peril of open source. If they don't, if they're not have like a commercial team behind it is there's not a lot of incentive for, you know, people to maintain docs really well. Uh, versus commercial companies sometimes are more incentivized. Um, and then it's growing and in terms of its ecosystem, it's growing, it's got a good ecosystem. A lot of the MySQL uh, connectors, you can also use MariaDB, but there are some where you might have few, less access to third party tools and integrations um, because they just aren't built for MariaDB. Um, so there is always, that, there's that risk, um, but not a huge amount of services that like would be able to use MySQL, wouldn't be able to use MariaDB. So in terms of best use cases for MariaDB, 
Uh, transactional applications, if you're using NODB's asset compliance uh, as your storage engine, it's got good asset compliance, it's got good support for foreign keys, which is ideal for applications that require that reliable transactional support. So things like e-commerce platforms or financial systems. Um, it's also good as a data warehouse. Uh, it's got excellent performance for analytical queries if you're using the column store engine uh, query or storage engine underneath. Um, and so really good for analytical queries on really large data sets. So good for data warehousing and, and BI applications. Um, and then also web applications. Um, it's really easily scalable um, and it's compatible with a lot of uh, popular web development frameworks. So it's a excellent choice for, for dynamic web applications where you need to scale uh, and replicate data on demand. Um, so that is all I have for you in today's video. Just want to break down RadyDB, explain it all, go through the architecture, go through some use cases, pros and cons, so you can be more educated on whether or not it's the right tool for you. Um, so have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.